38 who saw murder didn't call the police by Martin Gansberg. About the author, Martin Gansberg, 1920-1995, a native of Brooklyn, New York, was a reporter and an editor for the New York Times for 43 years. The following article, written for the Times two weeks after the 1964 murder, it recounts earned Gansberg an award for excellence from the Newspaper Reporters Association of New York. Gansberg thesis, though not explicitly stated, still retains its power. Background Background on the Kitty Genovese murder case The events reported here took place on March 1914 1964, March 14, as contemporary American culture was undergoing a complex transition. The relatively placid years of the 1950s were giving way to more troubling times. The civil rights movement was leading to social unrest in the South and in northern inner cities. The escalating war in Vietnam was creating angry political divisions. President John F. Kennedy has been assassinated just four months earlier. Violent imagery was increasing on television and film. Crime rates were rising and a growing drug culture was becoming apparent. The brutal senseless murder of Kitty Genovese and more important, her neighbor's failure to respond immediately to her cries for help became a nationwide and even worldwide symbol for what was perceived as an evolving culture of violence and indifference. Recently, some of the details Gansberg mentions have been challenged. For example, as the New York Times now acknowledges there were only two attacks on Miss Genovese, not three. The first attack may have been shorter than first reported. The second attack may have occurred in the apartment house foyer, where neighbors would not have been able to see Genovese, and some witness may say, in fact, actually have called the police. At that time, however, the world was shocked by the incident. And even today, social scientists around the world debated the causes of the Genovese syndrome. This is an essay that never fails to interest students. Summary in English Martin Gansberg's essay is about the murder of a 30 years old lady called Kitty Genovese near her apartment at midnight while she was returning from her work. We are told that the 38 neighbors of Kitty were silently watching the murder. The killer had stabbed Kitty in three separate attacks in Kew Gardens. The voice of the neighbors and their bedroom lights frightened the murderer and he ran away from there. Three times he came and stabbed her to death, but no one informed the police when Kitty was being attacked. Finally, one person who saw the murder called the police. In this essay, Gensberg wants to tell the reader that people in cities and towns have become indifferent to other people's suffering and pain. People are becoming unconcerned to what is happening in their fellow neighborhood. Life has also become busy and very few people dare to inform the case to police because they just don't want to involve in the case. It is the fear of police interrogation that many people look to other side and take their way when incidents like this happen in the neighborhood. Assistant Chief Inspector Frederick M. Luzen, an expert in murder investigations, feels shocked more by the people's cold reaction at the Kitty's murder than finding the murderer. Had anyone in the scene phoned the police? 
Kitty would have been alive today. The people who heard the first cry should have telephoned the police. The police would have arrived then and arrested the murderer. The investigation report says that Catherine Genovez, a 29 years old woman who was also called Kitty, was returning home from her job in her car. After she parked the car, she started to walk towards her apartment. It was quiet and dark. There, Miss, there, Miss Genovese saw a man coming towards her. Then, she nervously headed towards her apartment. In the meantime, a man grabbed her. When she screamed, someone from the apartment switched on the room's light. The man stabbed her and shouted, and she shouted for help. Hearing her scream, a man shouted, Let the girl alone. The murderer looked up at him and ran away from there. Miss Genovese tried to stand up and walked toward her apartment. When the lights went out, the killer returned again and stabbed her for the second time. She shouted again, and the people who heard her voice opened the windows again and many people switched on the room's light. The murderer got into his car and drove away. Miss Genovese tries to stand on her feet. A bus passes by. It was 3.35 a.m. The murderer returned. Miss Genovese had just reached the back of the building when the murderer stabbed her a third time and she died there. At 3.50, the police received a call from a man who was Kitty's neighbor. When the police arrived there, there were only two women at the scene. Nobody else came forward. The man explained he didn't want to get involved in the case, so he didn't call the police early. After six days later, the police arrested the murderer of Kitty Genovese. His name was Winston Moseli, a 29 years old machine operator, and charged him with homicide. Moseli had no previous criminal record. After hearing the case, the court ordered him to admit in hospital for psychiatric treatment. Moseli admitted that he had murdered Miss N. May Johnson, 24 of of Jamaica on February 29 and Barbara Carlick, 15 of Springfield Gardens last July. The police said that it would have been easier to arrest the murderer if Kitty Genovese if someone had telephoned him and Kitty's life would have been saved. Although many people witnessed the murder of Kitty but they did not inform the police. It is difficult to explain why they didn't call the police. Some witnesses said they thought it was a lover's quarrel, while others said they were afraid to call police for, for fear of getting involved in the case. One man said he was tired, so he didn't call the police. Finally, the story of Kitty Genovese raises the issue of morality and personal responsibility.